Hey guys, Thomas here and today we have a tips and tricks video for building and just overall working with the JS1 platform. Before we get into those tips and tricks though, we do have a quick announcement, which is that all of the 3D printed parts have been released on Thingiverse as of right now. Pretty much the story behind this is a few things. Um, starting with obviously in these trying times, we wanted a way to reduce the cost of the frame for people. So if you have a 3D printer yourself or your friends have a 3D printer, then you can print out the parts that you want for the JS1. That way you only need to get a hold of the carbon and the hardware for it. The other thing is too, is over the year, we've designed a whole bunch of different parts for different purposes, whether it's been for different races or HD systems. And they're all really niche things. Some of it's common, but most of it's sort of these niche things that a lot of people would want, but not enough to make it worth selling. So it ended up being a lot easier just to release these on Thingiverse. That way you can pick the parts you want. Obviously all of the common 3D printer parts will still be stocked on online stores such as Impulse RC, Pyroflip, and Team Black Sheep. And those are the parts that we 3D print ourselves if you want our exact printing to our specifications. Otherwise you can have a go at printing it yourself and yeah, happy days. Okay, so the first tip with building the JS1 is about this mount here, specifically the little bolt that goes through the TPU into the sort of center stack uh, standoff. A lot of people tend to over tighten this. Now with this bolt, it just needs to be to the point that it nips up with the TPU. You don't need to keep tightening it. It will hold in place just fine. If you do keep over tightening it, you will end up splaying the TPU and then this whole thing will be distorted and not flush with the rest of the canopy. Okay, next tip is to do with the SMA mount and specifically the TBS SMA itself. So with our design, we use the little sort of wings coming off of the SMA to actually get a better grip of the SMA on the mount. But with that, you can actually cut the bottom half since that one's not being used at all. And if you cut that off, it means that there's more clearance for the whole thing to go into compression whenever there's a big crash. And that'll help with reducing the chance of damaging any of the internal components. Okay, so the next one is to do with the arm bolts and specifically people over tensioning them. This is something we've seen a lot more from people changing platforms. Um, I believe a lot of other frames are designed to be built under high tension. With the JS1, it's not designed that way. It's designed to have a degree of tolerance that way it can handle crashes really well. Uh, not so much with the 20 by 20, this is an issue because the arms tend to be really locked in even if you really put a lot of pressure to try and move them. But on the 30 by 30, because the bolt's closer, the arms do have a touch more movement and people do try to eliminate all of that. If you just nip up the bolts normally, then the arms won't move at all in flight. If you do crash, there is a bit of give that is by design, but you can always just loosen the bolts, realign everything, tighten the bolts again, and you'll be good to go. Um, the reason why we haven't built the frame under tension is basically when you do that, you bring all the carbon right to the point where it wants to break. And that means that any little crash can set it off. And basically, well, yeah, the frame will, frame will sometimes pop like a little, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it just looks like the frame shattering into many pieces. And we didn't want that. We want this thing to be as strong as possible. Um, this is also the same method of design that they use in a lot of aerospace and car manufacturing because it tends to yield better results down the road. Okay, so those were some tips and tricks for building and working with the JS1. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you want more like this, do let me know. All of these 3D printed parts will be available in the description below, while well, there'll be a link to Thingiverse, and then that'll have all the 3D printed parts in it. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to get the JS1 frame, then it's available on places such as Impulse RC, Team Black Sheep, and Pyroflip, and many more. And yeah. I'll leave you with some awesome flying footage. Have a lovely day, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!